Shalom. This week's Vart Torah is being sponsored by Bracha and Rabbi Avram Shefris in memory of Bracha's aunt, Sharmu Rachma Samuel's Rachma Bat Rachel Zal, and also sponsored by Giselle and John Wine in memory of Giselle's great aunt, Aziza Abensor, Aziza Bat Yosef Zal. Thank you to the Shefrises and the Wines for this thoughtful dedication and for your support of our community, which should serve as a zchut for these neshamot. In 1830, at the age of 65, Rabbi Avram Dov Auerbach of Avrich, the author of the Bat Ayin, settled in the holy city of Svat. But although he had waited many years for the opportunity to bask in the spiritual glow of Israel, once there he found life in the Holy Land too difficult to bear. The hardships were all too apparent, while the holiness of the land was hard to discern. And when he felt he could bear no more, Rabbi Avram Dov began to think of returning to his home in Avrich, which is a city in the Ukraine, where he had been the Rebbe, since 1785. And soon after Rabbi Avram Dov reached a decision to return home, he was still in the land of Israel and the rainy season in Israel was approaching. One day as he was walking to Shul for Mincha, he heard noises coming from the surrounding rooftops. And he started asking people, what is happening? Where is the noise coming from? And they explained, a little bit amused, here in Sfat, we have the custom of performing household chores on our flat roofs. We could use the roofs for storing food and other household supplies. And so the noise you hear is caused by the women scurrying about removing all these things from the rooftops. Why are you doing that? Rav Avram Dov asked. Why? They answered. So that nothing gets ruined by the rain, of course, was the incredulous reply. But Rav Avram Dov was still confused. He looked up at the sky and it was blue. It didn't seem like any clouds or any rain in sight. It certainly doesn't look like it's going to rain. And they responded, they said, Surely you remember that tonight is the seventh of Cheshvan, and we begin to say the prayer for rain, Vesein Talu Mata Levracha. We plead to Hashem to remember us and rains for the crops in the field and provide water for us. So since we're sure that our Father in heaven will hear our prayers, we take precautions so that our possessions won't be ruined when the rain comes. And this unquestioning faith of the people affected Rabbi Arabach deeply. Suddenly his eyes were opened and he saw the sublime heights of faith achieved by the simple Jews of the Holy Land. And his pain and disappointment was replaced by a sense of awe at the holiness of the land and its people. And at that moment, he abandoned all thoughts of returning to Avrich and he began anew his commitment to grow his foothold in the Holy Land. And the holiness of the land is there, but it's sometimes hidden. God's presence in the world is often hard to discern. And this idea that things are there, but it's sometimes hard to realize it, can be learned from the Aserida Dibrot, from our Parsha of Yitro. All of you know the famous Pasuk, the first commandment, Anochi Hashem Elokecha, Asher Sicha Me'eretz Mitzrayim. I am Hashem your God, who took you out of Egypt from the persecution of slavery. Commentaries are intrigued by the word Anochi. The typical word for I is Ani. And so if Hashem is saying, I am Hashem, it should have said, Ani Hashem Elokecha. Why Anochi Hashem Elokecha? The Ishbitz Rebbe, student of the Kutzker, explains that the additional letter Chaf represents the Chaf Hadimion, which is the Chaf of comparison. For example, Mixer Ayom Kikulo, part of the day of mourning, is like the whole day. Or Ruv, or Rov Kos, Kikulo, if you drink majority of the cup on Pesach night, is tantamount to drinking the entire cup. The chaf means it's an approximation. It's similar, but it's not precisely or exactly that thing. And the Ishbitzer provocatively states that by saying Anochi with a chaf, the Torah is teaching us that the revelation was an approximation of God. The vision that the Jewish people were able to see at Sinai was something comparable to God, but not exactly God himself. And this astonishing idea indicates that there was a theological uncertainty built into the Aserida Dibrod. Even in the ultimate moment of divine revelation, when the maximum was able to be seen, there's an element that's unrevealed to the people. It's Anochi, not Ani, because we don't have access to the absolute understanding of the divine. And if Hashem keeps things hidden, it gets us thinking what we as human beings who strive to emulate God, what we reveal and what we keep hidden. There are those who present themselves outwardly as righteous, but unfortunately, privately, are unethical, insincere. On the other hand, the right dynamic between outward and inward, between what we reveal and what we keep hidden, is when we are humble and modest, reflective of the notion of tzniut. There's a beauty of keeping certain things hidden, 
of keeping that chaf in mind. Because not everything that you think needs to be said and not everything that you own needs to be shown. But there's another lesson of Anochi, which is that if even the revelation had uncertainty, it teaches us that in our lives, there will always be an element of uncertainty, things that we don't fully understand. Even with the holiness of Israel, Rav Avram Dov realized that it's not always readily recognizable, but it's there under the surface. Foundational mitzvot, like Shabbat and Kashrut, have explanations, but we have the humility to recognize that we don't necessarily fully understand all the reasons of the mitzvot. The inner workings of the world, including why bad things happen to good people, and why the world has been stricken with a pandemic, don't have easy explanations. It's troubling how often, after tragedies, some people who call themselves rabbis make these pronouncements of why the devastating event occurred. Years ago, I remember one leading rabbi in Israel saying that Hurricane Katrina was a punishment to the United States for supporting the Gaza disengagement. How does he know? After the Second Lebanon War, one leading rabbi said that soldiers were killed because they were not observant. And they make the pronouncements with absolute certainty as if they have a direct line to the control room upstairs. And it's always what the other group is doing wrong. And the fact is that we can't definitively understand the reasons why things happen. We must engage in introspection and we have to see how we can improve our ways. That's the Jewish response, despite not fully understanding. And we still have emuna. There's a world, there's a creator, there's a purpose, and we have a purpose. Once heard that people who believe in God have to explain why bad things happen to good people. But people who don't believe in God have to explain everything else. Yes, there is uncertainty in God's world, but there is more uncertainty if you don't believe in HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And moving away from tragedy to just thinking about life, Anochi with a chaf, it's an approximation. It teaches us the lesson to have courage to live and function creatively, even with the uncertainty. This message certainly resonates with all of us at this time of uncertainty, when we need to continue to move forward, to be safe and to be productive. We cannot know it's with certainty what lies ahead, but what is required of us is to not allow the questions to paralyze us. Rather, we have to have faith in ourselves and Hashem and move forward. And while Hashem can never be fully revealed, even at Har Sinai, and life will always have an element of the unknown, we counter that uncertainty by dedicating ourselves with our heart and passion to those things that are stable, that are rock solid. Be a person of integrity. Nobody can take that away from you. There's nothing uncertain about it. Be a person with principles and abide by those principles even when difficult and you will be respected and beloved. Perform acts of kindness to family, to friends, to community, because we have certainty in our responsibility towards others, which is the way we get through the challenges. Have faith in Hashem. And Anochi Hashem Alokecha Asher Osoisicha Mi'aretz Mitzrayim. Have faith in Hashem who redeemed us from Egypt. And, and He today should bring us all healing, redemption, and rejuvenation. Shabbat Shalom.